few comments of introduction. Uh, we're very happy, I'm Sam Hollander from the Acacia Track, and we're particularly pleased to participate today because we like Trackline's approach to the encouraging the practical use of the IT and communications equipment they sell uh, in, in the setting where we're working. Patient Track started with a clear clinical objective, which was to reduce the number and impact of adverse events. And because of that clinical objective, we had to have a clinical trial. And we're very grateful to the, uh, the Royal Infirmary in Manchester and the Central Manchester Trust for having that trial. Manchester have now, Central Manchester have now decided to roll patient track out to all their adult and children's wards across all their hospitals. Uh, Dr. Steve Jones oversaw that trial and is now overseeing the rollout, so he's most likely the best qualified uh, person I can think of to tell you about the results and the reasons <coughs> for using software like patient track. The trial certainly proved that patient track or, and products like it work and deliver benefits. The benefit of us doing a full trial was that we did make some adjustments to the software in that process to make sure it was ready for use and fitted for use for doctors and nurses in the NHS. So with no further ado, I'll just introduce Dr. Steve Jones to tell you about the trial and the results. Thanks, Steve. Um, I've never spoken at the end of the day before, and as a consequence, I've never spoken to an early empty lecture theatre. Fabulous, isn't it? It's all close and warm, and I like that kind of thing. Um, thank you for inviting me today. I am a bit of a wanderer. If people can't hear me, there's a man at the back who will turn me up. Not in height, unfortunately, because I've been after that solution for years. But, um, but certainly, uh, if people can't hear, please just stick your paw up and we'll sort something out. Um, I've, uh, I am described as a doctor in the intro, and, um, and I am indeed mostly a clinical doctor. I'm mostly an adult uh, intensive care physician, uh, one day a week, which is probably as much as I can cope with it. It's about one weekend a month. Uh, I work as an emergency uh, physician as well. Um, but for my sins, having trawled the wards, uh, I, uh, over my experience, have created uh, a vision in my mind of uh, patients just lying almost dead and moribund in bed. Uh, and it didn't matter really which particular hospital I was working in. I usually put up a picture of a skeleton in a slide at this point, in, the, in a bed at this point. Um, but I'm sure having seen the split this morning between uh, IT people and hospital doctors, there were more IT people this morning, they may well have been the ones that have already buggered off. But um, if there were IT people, you'd probably ho be horrified to think that you can go to hospital and actually get worse for being there rather than not. Um, so uh, this work, uh, hand in hand with patient track and the chap called Mike Buist, who's an intensive care physician in Australia, uh, it is, uh, is around the deteriorating patient in hospital and what we've done. Yeah, but I prefer you not to read them. You just want to listen to me. That's probably be better for me and more interesting for you. Um, just to give you an idea of some national context, uh, th this is an international and a national problem, but certainly uh, probably since about 1998, we have uh, had numerous reports through the literature from government-funded agencies the fact that there's a whole number of patients who come to my intensive care unit, come to an intensive care unit near you, who have actually been languishing on wards for a number of days often. Uh, and, uh, and the care prior to that, in terms of uh, recording the observations, recognizing an abnormal observation, and responding to it uh, has been less than optimal. Uh, these reports uh, continued, and some of these figures, if you, if you cast your eye over them, might be fairly shocking to you, uh, but they do reflect the reality that's on the wards. And having uh, seen the opportunity to use some IT uh, as part of a solution uh, to looking after these patients, we established a trial. Uh, what we did, first of all, in the baseline was actually just look at what we were doing. Uh, if you imagine the patient, you're clutching your chest, you go to the hospital, you end up in the A&E department, A&E's a bit chaotic uh, a lot of the time. And so actually we picked 
medical assessment unit or the acute medical unit just beyond a &E where all patients get admitted into if they're going to require to stay in hospital and we're, we're going to choose one of the wards further on. So we're looking at the patient stream uh, and we looked at what we were doing with that group of patients and we found uh, rather uh, fortunately that 95% of folk were having observations. Observations are uh, a blood pressure, a pulse, you know, measure, measures of your oxygen saturation in the blood, sometimes temperature. And we were actually doing really well at recording uh, those observations. And that was off the back of uh, a number of years' work where we had kind of reinforced the education and the competency around uh, getting those things done. We use a track and trigger tool, uh, which really just measures how uh, far you're deviating from normal. And the further you deviate in terms of your blood pressure, for example, if it's low or high, you generate a bigger score. Uh, we use five variables, heart rate, blood pressure, pulse, etc. Uh, and you can get a maximum score of 15. And yet even when you're adding up five numbers, all of which can only go up to three, we were still getting a 20% calculation error. We're not quite sure why that was, whether there's a misascribing or whether there's a calculation error, but certainly 20% of people were getting the wrong score, undervaluing them uh, and sometimes overvaluing them, which is uh, probably better than under. More importantly, we were only actually getting 29% uh, of the time a medical response to a problem. An early warning score of three in our organization probably has a mortality risk associated with it of about 15%. Most of our admissions uh, has a band between zero and five unstreamed. So it's about three times worse. And we expect, uh, and certainly within the trust, we have a protocol that would suggest that we uh, want those patients to be seen within an hour. But we were way off the mark there. Just as a course of interest, we had uh, hospital mortality about 9% and we were actually sort of fairly horrified about what we saw in terms of the practices uh, and variabilities uh, in the staff that we were expecting to do some work. We implemented uh, patient track uh, in its uh, early uh, iteration. Uh, as I say, we, we set it up as a clinical trial. We had our primary outcome, uh, interestingly enough, as, as hospital length of stay. And if somebody wants to uh, talk to me about that afterwards, we can have a long and heated discussion like I have been doing with the editorial board of this association. Um, but either way, that was what we did, primarily because uh, when we introduced the uh, paper track and trigger system uh, in 2000, we actually found that there was a reduction in bed days used uh, across the trust. So we felt it fair, we had an idea of what we were aiming for there. But what you can see, and I've got to use my new gadget here, I love these laser pens. Um, Clearly, when I was a child, my parents used to uh, tell me off for using them. I used to snatch them away, and I'm expecting all of my children to steal them off me too. Um, but uh, we had 700 patients in the, uh, in the before group uh, and a similar number afterwards. And you can see that 29 has increased to 78%. Still not perfect, uh, but, uh, but we were getting there. Six is higher still. That has a uh, mortality of about between 35 and 40%. Uh, associated with it if you reach one of those scores at any point in your stay. And so we were fortunate in getting actually most of those patients seen. Cardiac arrests is uh, a very dramatic event. Uh, actually, fortunately, quite small. I'm not sure we can read much into zero, but we, it's certainly zero. Interestingly, and probably most importantly from a finance point of view, we were able to uh, cut the number of missions and the number of bed days in our critical care unit. From a trust perspective, people say, well, how can you save money on this? And if it is about saving money, uh, then what you can do with all those bed days is do more high-end uh, elective work uh, and, uh, and earn more income. We trimmed uh, the hospital length of stay uh, by a couple of days. And again, slightly different uh, seasonal variation, but we, we trimmed mortality as well. So they're the headline uh, numbers, if you like, that, uh, that we, we took away from the project. And, and having done that, we decided as an organization, actually we could use this uh, port and augment the processes that we had in place and the, the, uh, the training that we had in place in order to improve outcomes across the trust. So uh, after much gnashing of teeth uh, and meetings and uh, iterations of the business case, we managed to uh, secure the money uh, to actually roll out the project across the entire The big organization, we have about a thousand beds. We uh, have all of the subspecialties between the children's and the adults' hospital uh, that uh, that we run. And so this is not a uh, an overnight big bang project. This is a, a project which is actually going to take uh, 
about two and a half years to roll out hand in hand with some of the educational and certainly general skills that we wanted to pick up uh, that we'd identified during the, uh, the, uh, the trial. This is a very fancy slide and Sam's introduced uh, and so I, I'm a bit beholden in some sense at, at giving these kinds of graphs out. Um, and and it, it very much just underlines the fact that you can, uh, you can use any kind of PDAs uh, and uh, use any kind of uh, uh, wireless infrastructure that you've got in place. I know some trusts don't have a wireless infrastructure, but it will be coming in one form or another over time. And if you're mindful, it would be actually useful to have this kind of device to, uh, to sit upon it. Uh, we've elected to use the sparse and uh, Hewlett Packard iPacks. Uh, as devices to input the observations at the bedside, uh, and we also have the Panasonic Tufflix uh, as uh, as tools around the ward areas as well. The uh, and you won't be able to appreciate these diagrams up here very much, I'm afraid, uh, but the recording is literally a PDA taken through on a tab system, and it forces you, once you've selected the patient, to input all the observations. So all of the observations are done, not just 95% of them. They're all done. Once it's done, the calculation is performed correctly uh, because it's done by the device rather than uh, a human being. Yes, there's still going to be errors, uh, potentially at an inputting stage, but uh, we haven't discovered many of those yet, certainly none that have caused any clinical issues. We used our uh, track and trigger or early warning uh, protocol uh, at the back end of this uh, because we, we wanted to sort of trial it as, as an electronic version of what we were doing. And so uh, we, we've uh, used the EWS. We've actually modified it for uh, this new iteration and the part of the rollout uh, as, uh, as we've collected evidence about what our patient group is like. So, for example, we have shifted our respiratory rate recording uh, to uh, include higher figures slightly. The reason that we've improvement in people being seen by doctors uh, is actually the thing that's in this chap's hand. Uh, it's a bleep. Uh, and for those of you that carry bleeps, has anyone had an experience of carrying bleeps? It's just bloody irritating, isn't it, when it goes off? And it doesn't matter. I, I tend not to carry them anymore because I've still got uh, post-traumatic stress disorder from being a junior doctor um, about it. But they just go off. And that's what they're meant to do. But actually, this system drives a repetition of that. So if you're asked to go and see a patient by the device, which is automatically raised according to the early warning score protocol, uh, you are expected to go. You're given a timeline. Uh, and if you don't go, it goes off again. And if you don't go, it gets escalated to your boss. Uh, and your boss knows that you haven't gone. Uh, and there is a, uh, a kind of soft stick to getting people to go. Uh, and whilst... I think it was the, the previous speaker that's alluded to junior doctors being a bit of a troublesome breed uh, and, uh, and getting workarounds. Actually knowing that your boss is uh, aware that you're not pulling your weight uh, in your job uh, can actually be a fairly strong uh, lever to getting the job done. And so that's the solution here. We expect people to go uh, and to log on to attendance, either to make the patient better with what intervention that they've uh, instituted, or in fact, uh, just to turn the system off, and it gives them a timely reminder to actually go back and, uh, and repeat the observations. You can, uh, if you want, this is support to remote consultation. Not many of them have actually cottoned onto this yet, but you can actually operate uh, this remotely. So I can sit on the ICU before I go home in the evening time uh, and see who all the scores are in the hospital uh, and who's sick and who I need to worry about uh, prior to going home. So it gives me an element of control and knowledge as well, albeit remotely. But as I say, I haven't actually promulgated that amongst the junior staff yet. From my point of view, uh, and I am a clinician, and I'm not a, di a clinical director until next week, so I don't really need to worry about money until then. Um, and, you know, I'm all about this. There are financial benefits. We uh, have a number of sort of uh, streams of money going out as well, picking up these patients. Mostly it's fees to do with uh, the uh, NHF, um, NHSLA uh, payments that we're making. Some of it's to uh, claims, some of it's to, uh, to lawyers' fees associated with those claims. And so we discovered uh, that stream of money that we could kind of tap into. We discovered the better use of critical care beds. Uh, we haven't uh, been able to close down uh, any acute beds yet, and I don't think that's in the plan because I'm not sure that like uh, 
you're any different from any other trust, then actually our bed base is really very tight uh, and we're not in a position.